Hey guys, Ron here, and today I'm going to be looking through all the Pokemon art that I have saved throughout my years of looking at Pokemon art online. I'm going to be primarily using DeviantArt, make all the jokes you want, but it's a good place to, you know, save art, and there's a lot of Pokemon art there. I just like people appreciating what I appreciate, and when you have a YouTube channel, you kind of have the power to show people what you like. So, I really have been trying to show you guys the stuff that I like in regards to Pokemon fan art for a long time, and I think this is the best format to do it, and you'll see the names of these artists on screen, so hopefully you guys check them out later. The first piece of art we have here is this this collection of Pokemon beta art that this guy has made, or Urbanator17. Now, he, I know that he has separate versions of each of these, but these are all just beta, beta Pokemon. I've made videos about, like, uh, unused Pokemon designs, and a lot of them are here. Um, like, for example, like, for example, this Trico art, this Torchic art, this is, this is how Torchic was gonna look like originally. This is the beta form of Torchic and Groudon, um, and then here, like, Dino, Zvilus, and Hydreigon, they were originally gonna be based on tanks, um, on German tanks, and that's why first their names have German numbers in them, but also in their final designs, they have, like, tread marks on them. That's a remnant of their original designs. Now, this, this is speculation, but this is pretty cool. Uh, and, uh, like, these originally, this, this became the, the, the Weedle line. Now this, this is, so this guy, I'm assuming takes the 3D models from the games, um, you can find them online, and he updates the shaders and materials, so he actually adds fur, and look at this, this is like a real life, fur, and this is from the, from what I assume, the model from the game, he just updates them to make them look really realistic, look at this, and even like, composites them into a nice background, this is very nice, he has others, like, like this Decidueye, like, but his, his, uh, Incineroar is my favorite. This is really good. And this is just a nice painting of, again, a beta Pokemon. This was a Pokemon that was gonna be in the game. It was scrapped. In the end, probably became a Tortu Tortuga. But this is some nice art, as if it be a actually became a Pokemon and has fan art of it. I love, I love, uh, unused or fake Pokemon that become fan favorites um, among, you know, actual Pokemon fans. Lately, I've been liking some 3D art. But there isn't a lot of it in my collection, but like, look at this. Again, this is definitely just the actual Celesteela from the games. He took the actual 3D models and just updated the shaders, the materials. This, look how real this looks. And it's so, it's not, not only is this realistic, but this is really well done. Look at this. Look at that. That's beautiful. And even added, like, he even added a bump map. That, that makes it, that makes it so light affects it as if this material this uh detail was modeled into it when it definitely isn't it's just a it's just a, a texture um but damn again more 3d art this this is i know from scratch this guy made it in the program zbrush look at this this is courtney right this, i mean it says courtney i should should read it I, I always tell people to read things before asking um but yeah this is amazing now this this is really cute this is baby forms of the Ultra Beasts. This is, like, look at this. This is a polyp. So this is like a, a baby jellyfish. This is what a baby jellyfish is. But look at this. is so cute. I, I wish this these were real. This is, this is what Pokemon art is all about. It, it, if it makes you wish these things were real, then, then it's successful. And look, it's just like a baby firework. That's so cute. That's cool. Like, this is, this is a smart idea. These are smart. And, like... As if Feramosa used to be ugly, and then molted and became a beautiful bug. This is really cool. This is like heavily photoshopped. Look at this. This is as if Celine, the the protagonist, the female protagonist, uh, was real. This is really good. I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit. Look at that. This is not like any. There's no 3D work here, but this is just really good photoshopping. This is photoshopped to the max, really. I mean, this is just some. Some good Deoxys art. I love the perspective. I and it's it's relatively simple, but it's just well done, well executed. And I would love to draw something like this in the future, like in this style. I love this style. This this has been floating around the internet for a long time. I mean, not for a long time, just for a while. I think it was made this year. But um, this is generic Pokemon designed by generation. What it, so this is basically how po a, a Pokemon basically looks like in Generation One, and then. All the other generations, like just the, um, an amalgamation of all the design traits, because each each generation the Pokemon look slightly different than the previous generation, and they have these patterns that each generation has. For example, Generation One, 
weird pink rock dinosaur. Yeah, a lot of the original Pokemon were just like dinosaurs or, or had just weird hard elements to them, like rocks and like a single spike on the head because they were all based on Rhydon's design because Rhydon was basically the first Pokemon ever designed. So, and then cat ears. Yeah, like Bulbasaur, Rhydon, they all just have cat ears. So like, this is, this is, this is smart. And then again, so generation two, a lot of a lot of just simple smiley faces. I, I can like th this is so cathartic because this is exactly what I'm thinking about when I'm looking at all the Generation Two Pokemon. I'm like they're all round. They all just like have facial markings everywhere, like Girafferig, Wobbuffet. They have faces everywhere, even you know not on their faces. This is smart. Generation Three in yeah abstract intermediate animals. So yeah, all of them are like weird like animals. They have greens and yellows. Like it's actually like funny. This is this is well done. I, I like this. I like this. <laughs> He nailed it with Generation 4. Like, extremely round evolution of existing Pokemon. That's, I mean, that's a lot of them. But, like, the blue. The bl that the blue and yellow. That's all of Poke- All of the Generation 4 Pokemon are just blue or yellow. It's weird. But it's so good. And there's just, like, random spikes like Garchomp. Oh, my God. And then Generation 5, a lot of them, you know, relatively humanoid or just, like... I, I mean, a lot of extra elements. This is obviously based on, you know, Sock and Throw. But, like, Generation 6, yeah, a lot of them were just... I mean, I don't know about the Generation 6 one, though, but the round stuff, the huge heads, hu a lot of them did have huge heads. I, that is a, that is true. Color scheme is naturalistic, but more saturated than previous games. That's true. A lot of saturated colors in Generation 6 design. See? I like this a lot. Now, look at this. This is some good art right here. This is... I love, I love this so much. This is so, so well made. Oh, my God. I mean, I, there's nothing to talk about because there's a lot of... I've seen this style before, it's just like, hyper-realistic, but, but not, it's hyper-realistic without changing the de actual design of the Pokemon. This is a Genesect, without changing, the, it didn't change anything about the Genesect, this is a real Genesect painting. This is really good. Like, Heat more here, he changes a little bit, but the design is still intact. He, this is basically what a Heat more would like, like, look like in real life. Like, a lot of, uh, uh, artists who try to draw Pokemon in real life, they change the design a lot. But this one, this is really well done. So good job on this guy. Good job. Now this one, I don't want to go into too much detail because this is a heated argument. A lot of people would have wanted, you know, a Sun and Moon 2, uh, an Eclipse. Uh, but this is basically, yeah, Lily and, and and how in the future, like maybe three years later. And this is what this is. I would want this. This is really well done because, like, this is how they would look like. A good time skip design doesn't add too much, but just like see like changes the proportions because they're older, they used to be kids, like, adds just one or two designs, like, design elements, like this, like, Hala's jacket, hopefully he didn't die, that, that would be sad, but like, now this, I love this type, this, uh, this guy makes all of his art basically in this style, and it's very cute, go check it out, like, like, look at this, it's just so, it's nostalgic somehow, and it's just so comfortable, it makes me feel really good, wow. PNG. I love it when there's no background and you can download it and steal it. <laughs> that was a joke. But like, it just pops out even more. This is really, this is some good art. Very well lit. Very, just, just a good technique. Now this guy, he does, he, he goes through all, through all of the, I, I think he only did, did generation one so far, but he goes through all of the Pokemon and just designs them in, in, in this style, basically. Like, look at, look at this. It's his very, it's, I guess it's his style. I don't know if this, there's a name for this style. It's just well done. Now this, there's a whole, this guy made a whole batch of these. And it's basically, he adds evolution stages between Pokemon evolution lines. And as if it was actual evolution, I guess. Uh, see this mat, this Magikarp one, that's, that's pretty good. That's believable. So this is cool. So original sketch designed by Quarant. So I guess he just took a like a kid's. So he basically took a kid's sketch of a Pokemon. I don't know if it was a, a guy he knew, a kid he knew, or like a son or his former child self. But this, I love this kind of stuff where you take child drawings and turn them into actual professional-looking drawings and you know pieces of art. This is another example. I like it a lot. I'll, I'll I'm gonna, I may do that for my own. I'll take my own. I mean, I was gonna do it, I actually was thinking about doing it for a long time, but I may actually finally execute it where 
I make a video and I show you guys all my old Pokemon art and then redraw the best ones. This guy does really good t like this is a common trend among among um, deviant artists or just artists online where they where people commission them to make teams of their you know Pokemon party. It just shows the the trainer y yourself. You ask them to draw you with your favorite Pokemon, I guess, a theme of your six favorite Pokemon, and this guy does it the best. Logan Cure, like, look at this is well made. This is I love the lighting on the. Look at this, the, that Gardevoir. That's a that's a good that's a good pose. This is good pose and lighting. Even the lighting on that. This is just this. You gotta be you gotta be talented to make this. It's sometimes it's hard to pull off, and this is just well, well done perspective, and lighting is everything's perfect here. And then you got these Alolan versions of Pokemon that didn't get Alolan forms. So Alolan, Alolan Cloyster, I guess Poison. This Alolan Lantern. Let me see a Dark Electric. Damn, I, it, this would make sense. I like this a lot. Now this male Mega Kangaskhan. Yes, please. This is good. This is good stuff. I've always wanted a kangaroo Pokemon that looks more kangaroo-y, and this would be a good example. This they should do this. This is really nice. This is a GIF. I mean, you can tell it's moving. Oh, this is good. This is really good. Again, you know I like it without. Like sometimes it looks really good without the background. Like look at this, same guy. But the the Skarmory, that's good. This is cool. What is this made of? I, like some kind of fabric. This is really well done. It even looks like the eyes glowing for some like how do they do that? Now this person, Shattered Earth, he has he or she has a, a whole line of these. I think they sell it somewhere. They sell like on shirts or and this is really well made. I really want I really want to buy that. It's a I guess official that said that the, the Pokeballs they they create a state um of paradise for the Pokemon basically and just the, the more expensive the more the higher the ball the, the greater the ball basically um, the more of a paradise it is for the Pokemon the more they want to stay and not you know wiggle out and escape um, when being captured once it's actually captured it conditions them to to like the trainer but like before when you know they're you're throwing the ball if it's a Pokeball it looks pretty cool looks like a nice peaceful campsite um, but it's nothing crazy so the, you want to leave the Pokeball but um when it's on Master Ball, it's probably like a nice mansion or something. It makes you want to stay forever. Okay, now this guy, Kezrek, he makes ships based on Pokemon? This really... What a cool idea! You gotta be crazy to make this. Ships based on Pokemon. Like, this Masquerade. Like, who comes up with this kind of stuff? Look at this! That's so crazy! And they look really... They're well done. Damn. I'm gonna look through all of these later. <laughs> this is all the dark type trainers. And yeah, this is totally it. <laughs> Nanny just doesn't want to be there. Na na these are all, I love all these characters. They're all really. Grimsley, I never thought of until. Until he appeared, reappeared in Pokemon uh, Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon. But the, I love. I lo Sydney was always a, a favorite of mine. This is just. This is perfect. This 3D Magneton. That's literally what a Magneton would look like in real life. That's it. There's literally like, no argument. This is well done. This is just, I think, just a lot of flow. I don't think this is actual 3D work, but it looks, it's so well made that it looks 3D. This is really nice. I love, I love the Nebby face. That's, that's cute. Like, there's no, nothing bad here. This is cool. Moana characters with Pokemon that they would have. Like, totally. This is so cool. Okay, now this guy. Guys. I think it's called Jinka, Gajinka, where you make Pokemon and you draw them as if they were, you know, humans. This guy, look at... Go and check this out. He has a whole series. I think he's up to like generation four by now. Every single Pokemon in real life. Not in real life, sorry, but as humans. It's just it's really well done. A lot of people do these kind of things, but this one this guy this guy does it really well. Like look at this. Look at this. Yeah. Totally. 100 percent Look at that. Okay. This person right here. This artist. Look at this. It's every single Pokemon I think. Yeah, even including Sun and Moon. Holy schnitzel. I'm not gonna... I mean, I'm, go check it out for yourself. Because you're gonna have to look at this for like ages. Okay, hold up. I'm reading the description right now. This guy drew these. The backgrounds from from the anime. This is amazing. Oh, this is cute. This is really nice. And it's totally... Be oh my god. I like, I like this a lot. Look at this. Crustle is actually a Pokemon that I think is under underrated in just concept and design. 
This just tells a really good story. So, it's enough to have really good art, but when you tell a good story through the art, like, look, look, this is the same guy as before. This is just really well done. And this one's even, this one is animated, right? This is cute. A rock, paper, scissor Pokemon. I love it a lot. This is the same guy who did the uh, baby Ultra Beast. Okay, I'm gonna have to leave it off on this because I, there's just way more art than I expected. I, this is probably not even a quarter of all of my liked uh, art pieces on DeviantArt. But um, this is a really good one to end it off on because this is just amazing. This is actual 3D. This is made in, I believe, ZBrush. But um, there's li this is literally perfect. <laughs> So guys, if you if you actually like this video, please like it and share it with other people because you know sharing first my channel and this art. Subscribe if you want more. And if this video does well, then I'll make part two where I just react to the rest of my likes. If you do want to see more things that I like, just follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I'll see you guys very soon.